Oh, that and a bag of chips. She's a she's a life insurance agent. She's a doula. She wants to be in a she aspire to be an adjuster one day. Yeah, that's enough of that. We love literally don't come and preach and teach the word of God. And did I mention she's a singer? She's really getting real good at sewing stuff. I mean, she is tough to be with that. Let Lady Jones preach or teach the word of God. I pray the Lord lead you in Jesus' name. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Come on now. Don't you toot my horn. Okay. Come on. I'm about to say that somebody else toot that horn. Yes. Praise the Lord, everybody. Praise the Lord. We just thank and praise God for being here today. Thank God for the service thus far. Tonight I want to talk on a topic. <clears throat> Uh, last Wednesday, we did our course for the adjustice license, and the teacher was teaching and explaining, and she came across a word or a phrase, and boy, I tell you, just my brain kind of shifted when she was teaching. I kind of left the building for a minute. So she was discussing the fact that a person who constantly leaves their door open is a morale hazard. Hello. So in the insurance world, a person who constantly leaves their door open is considered to be a morale hazard. So today we're gonna to talk about two words who are similar but slightly different and the difference is the intent. So we're gonna talk about morale and we're gonna talk about moral, all right? I remember so clearly when she was teaching, she say morale with the E. Mm -hmm. So she wanted to make sure that when we got to that test and it was time to take the test, that we didn't confuse morale with the E with moral, right? right. All right, so moral concerned with the principles of right and wrong behavior and the goodness or badness of human character. So when you're talking about morals, that's something that all saints should have. You know, some people have good morals and they're not even saved. You know, they just they just good, they just got good morals, right? Mm -hmm. Holding a manifesting high principles for proper conduct. Isn't that what we are as Christians? Mm -hmm. We're supposed to put this in high value, right? Mm -hmm. Having proper conduct. It's a lesson. We're still talking about morals, especially one concerning what is right or prudent. Prudent is in the Bible, right? That can be derived from a story, a piece of information, or an experience. So I think we've read the Bible a few times. Pastor definitely read it a few more times than I have. But I think as I continue to go through the scriptures, it seems pretty clear to me that God expects us to have good morals in all experiences, whether they're good or bad. He wants us to represent him the right way, no matter what we go through. Can we all, you know, do, are y'all getting that, you know, since you've been reading the Bible, that he wants us to have good morals when we go through things, right? Amen. So a person's standard or behavior or belief concerning what is and what is not acceptable for them to do. That's the purpose of having the Holy Ghost. Whereas good morals are in people that have never been saved, the Holy Ghost helps you put that thing into action, right? So we are supposed to know what is acceptable and not acceptable for us to do. So some synonyms for morals is moral code, code of ethics, moral standards, moral values, principles, right? Principles of right and wrong, rules of conduct, standards, morality. Okay, six of morality and ideas. Now let's look at morale, morale with the E. Morale, the mental and emotional condition 
of an individual or group with regard to a task or goal to be accomplished. So it's dealing with the spirit of it, right? The enthusiasm, the spirit, and the loyalty of the person. Moral compass is something that we all should have. Have you ever heard that? A moral compass? So a moral compass is something that everybody needs. Used in reference to a person's ability to judge what is right and wrong and act accordingly. Right? That's what having a moral compass is. I think the Holy Ghost is the greatest moral compass there is. Right? Okay, so a natural feeling. It says a natural feeling that makes people know what is right and wrong and how they should behave. Have you been ever been listening to somebody that you love and they just telling that thing, right? They telling you that story and boy, they feel so emotional about it, but that more compass inside of you is saying, oh man, boo, I know you feel that way, but it just ain't right. You know what I'm saying? That more compass is supposed to give you direction. Now think about an actual compass. Hello, an actual compass is used for purposes of direction, to give people direction, right? That's what the Holy Ghost is for. The Holy Ghost is our compass, and it's definitely our moral compass. Amen, that's right. Do you agree with that? Amen. All right, so increase in crime shows that society is losing its moral compass. Can you see that? All over the news, everywhere you turn, like there's so much stuff going on in the world, but it's sad to say that's to be expected that's right. in the world. It's not going to get better in the world. It's only going to get what worse. Yes. Yes. But the problem is there is a moral decline in the church. Again, that's right. There's a moral decline. Yep. And yep. we got to stop laying down our moral compass yep. for this reason or that reason. Yep. God our moral compass through good, through bad, and what? Ugly. Come on now. Right? That's right? It is said that the components of a moral compass is comprised of principles, values, beliefs, goals. But don't you know that your principles have to line up with the word of God? Your values, your beliefs need to line up with the word of God. Your goals definitely need to be lined up with the word of God. Including purpose and even wants, right? The Bible says if you delight yourself in the Lord, he'll give you the desires of your heart. Then it turn around and say that you pray and you receive not because you pray amiss. Right? So in other words, you pray not according to his will. And that's why we need an increase. We need an up, 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 up in our moral compass so we can even know what to pray. We want to pray in God's will. We don't want to pray against or praying amiss the way the Bible words it, right? Amen, that's right. All right, so synonyms to moral compass. It deals with the conscience, right? Moral sense, belief system, person, serving as a guide for morally appropriate behavior. All right? So the principles of a moral compass is integrity, right? Amen. Responsibility, yes. compassion, Amen. and forgiveness. Mm -hmm. These are the principles of a moral compass. This, this is just all together what we are here for. Amen. Integrity, right? right. Yes. Responsibility, That's right. compassion, and forgiveness. And I don't know about y'all, I kind of had some of these things kind of offset a little bit, on, depending on my emotions or how I feel. Amen. But, I mean, the, the closer I get, the older I get, I'm learning that God ain't tolerating a whole bunch of stuff that he tolerated when I was two years in him, when I was five years in him, when I was six years in him. Some of the things, the ways I felt, the way I behaved, he's not tolerating it from me anymore. So he's uh, caused me to come up higher in my level of integrity, right? My responsibilities, I got to come up higher. Right. Every decision I make, I got 12 people to think about before I make that decision. Yeah. And then, that's before I go across my threshold. 
before I leave out the house, right? Then once I leave out the house, it's you all that God expected me to really make a decision that, hey, how's that decision going to affect the people of God? How's that? Oh, hallelujah. How is that decision going to affect the parishioners that are following you? So we can't get caught up. We can't get caught up in our culture. We got to focus more on our spiritual culture, right? Our spiritual culture is, you know, it comes through the word of God, through what we're being taught at church, what our pastor's teaching us, what the word of God says. But see, sometimes you can get your spiritual culture and bury it or put it under the bush like the Bible say. But God wants us to bring it and put it on the top with the light, right? All right, so we're talking about morale and morals, okay? So a moral hazard, I'm going to get to the scripture. When she said this about a person leaving that door open, it's considered to be a moral hazard. I thought about the scripture that says that you cannot bind, or you cannot uh, take a man's house except you first Bind the strong man. Hey, so today I'm, I'm trying to tell you, the devil is trying to bind your strong man. <laughs> Listen, I don't know how long you've been saved tonight, but whether you've been, you just got saved or you've been saved a while, the enemy is trying to do what? Bind your strong man. He is wanting your flesh to take the preeminence over the spirit. He wants to walk in all kinds of ways, carry on in all kinds of ways that does not represent Christ. Moral hazard. A hazard is a danger. It's a risk. Moral hazard, morale hazard. It both have hazard on the end. Amen. It's an unsafe place to be. Yes. Hello? It's unsafe. It's just not a safe place to be. Moral hazard and morale hazard are very similar sounding terms. And while they are even close in meaning, the subtle difference between them is an important one. While both terms describe a change in behavior related to risk, one implies certain malice, while the other depicts a more benign evolution. So some things you can do subconsciously and some things you can do intentionally. Right? You got to know the difference between what you're doing intentional, how your intentions are being moved, or something that happens subconsciously. That's how God view our sin, right? Amen. Okay, so the critical difference between moral hazard and morale hazard is the intent of the heart. What's the point? Always ask yourself, what's the point? What's the purpose? Let's go to Matthew 20, 12. A person that leaves that door open. Tonight, we're talking about, in the justice class, they was talking about your natural door, your home, the door of your home. Oh, I got insurance. How many got warranties on the, on your property in your house? I know I do. I thank God for the warranty. Hey, if something happened to that washing machine, do, do, do. hey, hello, right? And sometimes you can be a little careless because you know you have insurance, right? When you got your new phone, you was like this, even though it had a case on it. You were trying to protect it, right? Yeah. Trying to make sure how you sit it down, you sit it down gentle, you be with ease, right? Yeah. Then once it get old and it's almost time for that new phone to come out and you do for an upgrade, now you slam that bad boy on the table, right? You just, you just acting all kind of ways with it. <laughs> you see what I'm saying? So that's how we do with our spiritual walk. At first we were walking, walking soft before the Lord. And then over the course of time we just start carrying on like we do our cell phone. Right? Matthew 12, 29. Or else how can one enter into a strong man's house and spoil his goods except he do what? First, bind the strong man. That's a question. Amen. The devil can only get what you allow. The Bible says he's walking to and fro as a roaring lion seeking whom he may divide, who would grant him permission, right? So it says you got to accept first he bind the strong man, and then he would do what? Spoil his house. You ever taste something spoil? The enemy is trying to spoil our spirit, trying to spoil our heart, trying to spoil our conscience. 
He's trying to take everything that God put in us out. Amen. I see why Jesus said, I've been saying this, when he come, when he find faith in the earth. Yes. Because Amen. every day you got to decide which way you're going to carry yourself. Every day you got to decide how you're going to respond, how you're going to act, how you're going to behave, right? right yes. Okay, so let's go to, it says, he that is not with me is against me. We can't straddle the fence in here. We got to choose if we're going to walk in the spirit or if we're going to walk in the flesh. Right? right? Now let's go to verse 33. Same chapter, 12, 33. Mm -hmm. Either make the tree what? Good. Good and its fruit what? Good. Or else make the tree what? Corrupt. Corrupt and his fruit what? Corrupt. So, so many areas in the Bible, it tells you one or the other. the tree good and it's what? Fruit good? What is your fruit? Your action, your responses, how you carry on, right? right. Or else make the tree what? Corrupt and it's fruit what? Corrupt. But a tree is known by what? It's fruit. A tree is known by its fruit. All generation of vipers it says, how can ye be an evil and speak good things. For out of the abundance of the heart, what happens? <laughs> Don't you know whatever in your heart going to come out of your mouth? Amen. All you got to do is be still. Mm -hmm. Whatever in your heart is going to come out of your mouth. This is why we got to fast. This is why we got to pray. This is why we got to put the word of God in our heart. So whatever's in our heart can do what? Come out of the mouth. So it says, a good man out of the good treasure of the heart bring it forth what? Good things. Good things. It changed now. It said good fruit. Now it says good things, right? Good things. And an evil man out of the evil treasure bring it forth what? Evil things. Evil things. But I say unto you that every idle word that men shall speak they shall give account thereof in the day of judgment. The day of judgment seems so far off. And I think that's why we're so like a days ago when it comes to how we carry ourselves, how we treat each other in marriage, how spouses interact with one another, with children and parents, how we carry on. I think because judgment day seems so far off because nobody plans to die, right? Everybody, when March come, honey, March, this is my month. You ever see people say, honey, I'm celebrating all month long. That birthday may be on mine, March the 15th. I'm celebrating from March the 1st to the 31st. See, we value our birthday, but there's an ignorance here because we don't know our death day. And because we don't know our death day, we don't really do the stuff that we need to do all the time. Right? Our moral compass is declining. You hear me? Yes, it is. So it says, For by thy words, verse 37, thou shalt be justified, and by thy words thou shalt be what? Condemned. Condemned. So we get to pick. We get to pick. Let's go to verse 38, that same chapter. Then certain of the scribes and of the Pharisees answered, saying, Master, we will see a sign from thee. But he answered and said unto them, An evil and adulterous generation seeketh after a sign. And there shall no sign be given to it but the sign of the prophet Jonah. Right? Y'all right. remember what happened to Jonah, right? right. Okay, for well, as Jonah was what? Three days and three nights in the whale's belly, so shall the Son of Man be three days and three nights in the heart of the earth. Now, it says, the men of Nineveh shall rise in judgment with this generation and shall condemn it. The men of Nineveh, Amen. That was God. Jonah didn't even want to go to Nineveh. It was so wicked. Yes, he ran from God until he was captured in the belly of the whale. But the men of Nineveh are going to rise and judge this generation. That's a problem. That's a problem. 
We got some work to do. If Nineveh is going to judge this generation, we got some coming up higher that we need to do like yesterday. The man of Nineveh shall rise up in judgment with this generation and shall do what? Condemn it. Because they what? They repented. Do y'all hear me? We sit and we take preaching light. We sit and we, oh, that's just Sister Butterbean. That's just Brother Apple Pie. That's just Pastor So-and-so. But never as wicked as they were, they repented. And because they repented, they're going to judge and condemn this generation. That's a problem. Because they repented at the preaching of Jonah. And behold, a greater than Jonah is here. Amen, that's right. The queen of the south shall rise up in the judgment with this generation and shall condemn it. Yes. The queen of the south is going to condemn this generation? Yeah, of course, God. That's a problem. We got some coming up that we need to do. Our moral decline has got to turn around and it's got to turn around we in an hour where people know to do good and do it not because of what the person thinks. Oh, I know it's the right thing to do, but because you think I ought to do it, I ain't doing it. That's why the queen is going to judge this generation. That's why the men of Nineveh is going to judge this generation because they had conscience. Hello? I walk the soul. So it says, for she came from the uttermost parts of the earth to hear the wheels of Messiah. She came all the way from one side of the earth to the other just to hear the wheels of Messiah. And people won't come down the street. People won't go from crying to preacher. People won't go from government street to preacher. People, you hear me? She came from the other side of the earth. This is the difference in today's moral compass and back then. They honored the truth. They honored wisdom. Right. They traveled for it. Mm -hmm. Right? right. Y'all with me tonight? Amen. Amen. So she traveled to the uttermost parts of the earth to just to hear the wisdom of Solomon. And behold, a greater than Solomon is here. Yes. You notice all these things is before the Holy Ghost actually came on the scene. So what's all the excuse? What excuse do we have for our more decline to just keep going down, down, down? Okay, it says 43. When the unclean spirit is gone out of a man, mm -hmm. he walking through dry places, yes. seeking rest and finding none. Don't you let the enemy dry you up? When I came in church tonight, I came in shouting. I came in here, I had my Bible in my hand, I was, I was dancing, hey, I'm giving God the praise, I came in the door like that tonight. You can't let the devil draw you up. The devil looking at dry places. You want to sit up and dry up spiritually, the devil, that's what he looking, he coming. He know where the dry place is. Hello? What we said, he got the first do what? Bind the strong man. So it says, when the unclean spirit, he, he walking through dry places, seeking rest, and finding none. Is that your testimony? <laughs> Devil come by here, baby, ain't nothing here for you. I don't have nothing for you. When he come by my house, baby, I don't have nothing for you. I plead the blood of Jesus, even over my children that's not Holy Ghost filled yet. You can't get nothing here. And that, that, is, that needs to be our mindset. Stop giving place to the devil. Yes. Somebody try to mark me down. Tell him. <laughs> then he said, I will return in my house. Don't this just sound spooky? I will return into my house. Uh, Bishop said, um, he said, the devil will talk you out of going to church. You stay at home, and then he'll run on and go to this church and sit on the front row. Mm -hmm. Amen. See, we, we can't see the enemy, and we can't see God because God is a spirit. So we don't think we really understand the importance of our spiritual state. Right? Amen. So he said, I will 
won't return into my house from whence I came out. And when he come, he find it empty, swept, and what? Garnished. Then go and he and take it with himself. What? Seven other spirits. You heard that song in the world. I got a new attitude. Mm -hmm. Yeah, baby, you got a new attitude because that devil is bringing some old spirits. <laughs> you walk in the flesh long enough, baby, you got a new attitude. You got an attitude that you ain't never walked in before. You got a spirit you never walked in before. You doing stuff you said you will never do before. Amen. Hello? Yes. Got a new attitude. It ain't a good attitude. It's a new attitude for sure. But it ain't a good attitude. I got a new attitude. No, honey. Get rid of that attitude because it's counterproductive. Jesus. It's counterproductive. So it says, then go and he and take it with himself. Seven other spirits. A morale hazard is somebody that leave their door open. Is your door open? <laughs> Everybody locked their house before. Then y'all locked your house before y'all left home tonight. You, you locked your house before you. Hello, you locked your house, right? Amen. Did you lock your car before you came in? Amen. Hello. <laughs> see, uh-uh, no, see, we, we, we take this natural stuff so serious. How many got alarm on their house? Do -do -do -do. You, hello? Amen. Right? When we leave the church, we, right? Yeah. I sit in my house, I can see everything y'all doing in the sanctuary because my what? Cameras? <laughs> hello? Who got that door open? That was God. See, I'm around hands of somebody that leave that door open. When you leave your door open, you are extra risk. Mm. Jesus, help us. But what about your spiritual door? Do you have your spiritual door open? Do you have a peak hole? Do you have a foot hole? Do you have an inch away for the devil to come back in and bring you a new attitude? And then sit in the church? Who wants to go to hell through the church? Didn't I prophesy in your name? Didn't I cast out devil? These are people that's out there in the street. The last time I went, this ain't here. Nobody out there that need to be saved talking about they was casting out devils. Have y'all? No. These church people did not prophesy in your name. Did not cast out devils in your name. Did many wonderful works in your name. And he said what? I never knew you. Never. Hello. Amen. That's right. Come on. Is anybody in the house tonight? Amen. So bring back seven other spirits more wicked than himself and they enter in and dwell there. See, there's hope. If you got a crack, just close the crack. Yeah. Just close it, right? Yeah. You heard Pastor when you were preaching, open the door. You heard him come saying that Sunday, open the door. Leave the door open. Well, don't leave your spiritual door open. Because yeah. you leave your spiritual door open the enemy gonna come in, he gonna wreak havoc in your soul. Amen. Hey! Amen. Don't sell your birthright. Then Pastor talked to us about selling our birthright. Don't sell your birthright. Jesus. Close the door. I don't know how many times me and Pastor say, close the door to our bedroom. Close the door. 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 Because when they come in, they don't think about what? Closing the door. It's mama. It's daddy. They just gonna tell us what they need, right? And we have to say, close the door. Hey, America, come back. Close the door. Even serenity, serenity, close the door. We gotta close the door. We say close the door so much. I'm telling you, close the door. Close the door. Close the door. He found it. It empty, right? So it says in 45, then go and he and take it with him seven other spirits more wicked than himself. And they enter in and what dwell there. And the last state of that man is worse than the first. This is encouragement because we don't want to get to this point. We all have cracks that we need to close. Yes, we all have doors that we need to close. 
clothes, ways, attitudes, mindset, the way we think, the way we do things. We need to do what? Close the door. So before I get to this point, we need to go on a close the door. Let's, let's do a, a, a close the door challenge. <laughs> let's, do, let's do a close the door challenge. Close the door. Close the door. While he yet talked to the people. Behold his mother and his brethren. I'm in verse 46. Stood without desiring to speak. So Jesus is talking to the people. Uh -huh. He's telling them what the devil would do to you if you leave that door cracked for him. And then somebody came and said, Hey, your mother and your brethren, they desire to speak with you, right? Yeah. But he answered 48 and said unto him that told him, Who is my mother? <laughs> Listen, you can't have careful salvation. Hello? You can't have Kimbo salvation. You can't have spouse salvation. You can't have sibling salvation. Whatever you do, I can do better. No, you can't have Kimbo. He said, who is my mother? Did y'all notice that when they said the people that was in the upper room, that Mary was in there? Jesus' mother had to be what? Filled with the Holy Ghost. We can't have Kimbo salvation. Who is my mother? And who are my brethren? He said. If your family is out the will of God, if your family is trying to be your compass, you got to leave that alone and you got to let the Holy Ghost be your compass. And he stretched forth his hand toward his disciple. I don't know about y'all, but I want God to be able to stretch his hand toward me. He said right here, he, listen what he said. He said, he stretched forth his hand to the disciple. He said, behold, my mother, he disowned his natural mother. He disowned his natural brother. He said, these, the disciples, the followers of the word, the followers of the scripture. Don't you want God to just stretch his hand and say, hey, right here. This is my mother. This is my brother. You want God to say that about you? Or you want him to be ashamed of you? I believe God just ashamed of someone. <laughs> just ashamed. So he said, whosoever do the will of my father, which is in heaven, the same is my brother and sister and mother. Now Mark 3 says the same thing. It says, no man can enter into a strong man's house and spoil his good, except he first do what? Bind a strong man, and then he will spoil his house. We don't want to be a morale habit and leave our door open. Let's go to 2 Corinthians, and I'm going to close in Corinthians. Excuse me, I'm, I'm, I'm going to close in 10 minutes. I'm going to verse in 10 minutes. I'm going to read. So 2 Corinthians 7. This is one of my favorite verses. It says, Having therefore these promises, dearly beloved, it said, Let us cleanse ourselves from all filthiness of the flesh and what? Spirit doing what? Perfecting holiness in the fear of God. It says, receive us. We have wronged no man. We have corrupted no man. We have defrauded no man. I speak not this to condemn you, for I have said before that ye are in our hearts to die and live with you. This is Paul. He's saying, I love y'all. He, You know how when, uh, as a child, when you, you get ready to take child love, I don't know about y'all, but I'm going to talk up. Before I, before I, I use my words before I use my hand. Now, you get the hand, baby, you just didn't, oh my God, you just didn't went way over the Bible. I'm a words person. I'm going I'm to preach you a sermon. I'm going to talk to you, right? So, he's sugaring them down and, and coming in and like, I, I love y'all. I ain't trying to hurt you. I love you, right? So, he said, verse 3. I speak not this to condemn you, for I have said before that ye are in our hearts to die and to live with you, right? Great is my boldness of speech towards you. Great is my glory of you. And sometimes when a word comes forth, I'm kind of relaxed tonight, but sometimes the word comes forth, it comes forth with boldness, right? And, and it has kind of 
grit your teeth a little bit, right? Amen. But he let them know this ain't to condemn you. Amen, that's right. So he says, for when we were come to Macedonia, our flesh had no rest, but we were troubled on every side. Mm. Yeah. Without, we're fighting. Yes. Within, we're fierce. Sometimes we judge every word that come out of the preacher's mouth. We don't never know what that belt is going through to bring a word to us. Right. He said, without is fights, and within is what? Fears. Every preacher has their own battles. Every preacher has their own things that they deal with. Right? Amen. Nevertheless, God that comforted those that are cast down. Don't you know God would comfort you when you cast down? Amen. He would come and comfort you. He said, God that comforted those that are cast down comforted us by the coming of Titus. Yeah. And I, I want you to have the spirit of Titus. Yes. You need to be the type of person that is just a comforting soul. Yes. When you come into the presence of people, it needs to be comforting. You know, they need to just feel good about themselves. If they cast down, they need to feel like, oh my God, I got to uplift. Hallelujah. Amen. Yesterday I was on the phone with property uh, Clark and, and we were preaching to each other. We were just preaching. Hallelujah. I'm preaching to her. She preaching to me. And honey, we was ran back. Ha! She was preaching. Ha! I said, ha! We was preaching. Hallelujah. Hell was sitting on the sideline just grinning. We was having church. We were just preaching and encouraging each other in the Lord. And she said, well, I got to go. I got to run some errands. Honey, I was so Not 
that you were made sorry, but that you sorrow to repentance. Pastor tell that all the time. If, if a husband uh, do something to his wife, he say, listen, I'm sorry. And then he go do it again. He say, you just sorry. Right? You want to repent. He said, you sorry to what? Repentance. For you were made sorry after what? Godly man. This is what I'm getting to. We need to have repentance daily. We need our moral compass and conscience need to be so sensitive that we know when a thing is right and when it's wrong. Come on now, that's a way that seems right to the man. Pastor just brought that Sunday. It says, but the end thereof are the ways of what? One verse says death, the other one says destruction. Anytime it's written two times, baby, that's serious business, right? All right. For behold, this self-same thing that you saw after a godly sort. Right? What carefulness is brought in you? See, when you sorry at the godly sort, you're careful. You know what I'm saying? You just you want to be careful. You that all of a sudden that, that bold like a lion spirit, you just you, you, you coming down like a like a cat. I, first I was like a lion, now I'm coming down like a cat. I want to tell the truth, but I don't want to destroy you with it. Hello? What carefulness? He said, when I wrote you, I was heated. He said, I ain't mean to condemn you, but baby, I'm so glad that it made you sorry in a godly kind of sorry. He said, when you heard that word, it made you more what? Careful. Y'all hear me? Amen. So he said, what carefulness was in you? It brought in you, yay. What clearing of yourselves. When you got that godly sorrow, you want to clear yourself. Amen. You don't want, I don't care what they think of me. I do. Yeah. I do. I do. I do. Yes, I do. I, I, I ain't as fast as saying it making no matter to me right now. I, 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 it ain't going by my vocabulary now. I don't hear it. <laughs> when I hit it, I hit it. But I care. I care. You got to care. Yes, you do. You got to care how you look. Yes. You got to care how you make people feel. You got to care how your decision is going to affect somebody else. Yes. Right? right? He said that word brought carefulness, clearing of yourselves. He said, what indignation? Yay. What fear? Yay. What vehement desire? Yay. What zeal? Yay. What revenge? And all things you have what? Approved yourselves to be clear in this matter. We want to be approved for a loan. We want to be approved for college. We want to be approved for a call. We want all these credit improvements. But what about approving yourselves from spiritual matters? Yeah. You hear me? Amen. He said you approve yourselves to be clear. We're closing the door. We don't want to be a morale hazard. Right? Amen. So he says, wherefore, I'm in 12, though I wrote unto you, I did it not for his, this, his cause that had done the wrong, yeah. nor for his cause that suffered wrong, but that our care for you in the sight of God might appear unto you. Yeah. Right? Yeah. Therefore we were comforted in your comfort, yea, and exceedingly the more joy we for the joy of Titus. Because his spirit was refreshed by you all. Do you have a refreshing spirit or is your spirit a drain? For if I have boasted anything to him of you, I am not ashamed. But as we speak all things to you in truth, even so I are boasted. He said, which I made before Titus is found a truth. Now you see here, he's saying everything I said about, about you, I stand by. Mm -hmm. He boasted to Titus about the people of God. And he said, everything I said, I stand by it. But you see, earlier, there was some ruckus going on there. There was an issue there. There was a conflict. He saw some error in them. Listen, we're going to have error 
We're going to have things that's going to be disappointing to one another, but we still got to love each other. I still stand by everything that I said about you. Even when you, I can't take nothing away from this man. I don't care if he make, feel, make me feel like heat want to come out of my ears. I can't take nothing from the type of man that he is. I can't take nothing from the type of father that he is. I can't go tell no devil and no human being that he ain't a good man just like God is a good God. But see, in the body of Christ, we want to take away all of the good after there's been some type of trouble, after there's been some type of issue. We start opening the doors to all these new attitudes that's not of God. Close the door. He stood by everything he said. Yeah, I got to rebuke you. Yes, I got to chastise you. I'm so glad you received it. Right? For if I have boasted anything to him of you, I am not ashamed. But as we speak all things in you, to you in truth, even so our boasting, which I made before Titus, is found a truth. And his inward affection is more abundant. Listen, his inward affection is made more abundant. Yes. You've got to be the type of person that causing somebody inward affection to be abundant but not diminishing. Amen. Amen. Hello? Did I just stumble over my words? I need to say that again. You need to be the type of person that makes somebody's inward affection more abundant. Not to diminish somebody's affection. Amen. You can't go and tear down and cause a deep in somebody's inner affection. Mm. Jesus, help us. Lord. Help us, God. Can we have a moment of silence? Mm. Jesus. That inner affection was more abundant. The inner affection was more abundant. That's the type of person that I want to be. More abundant towards you. See, this this is, this is verses that we don't really look at because it ain't talk about our blessing plan, and it ain't you know, <laughs> you know what I'm saying? It ain't it ain't God is a good God. Yes, He is. No, it's talking about your character. Amen. It's talking about the way you carry yourself, the way you treat people. So whatever Paul said. Whatever he said, oh my, my, it caused Titus to feel like, oh my God, now this is the people of God right here. <laughs> Come on now. We want to strain out a net and swallow a camel. I see this little net. <laughs> strain out a net and swallow a camel. Increase somebody's affection towards the people of God. That's a real, baby, I don't care about like you, if everything you say make me mad, I'm say, baby, he know he preach hard, but my God, that's a mighty man of God. Hello? Come on, now, just tell the truth. Man, he cooked my goose, but hey, he saved and filled with the power of the Holy Ghost. Hello? Man, he preach hard, but my God, he's a good man. He's a great father. Why we can't do stuff like that? Feel how you feel, but don't Y'all ready for me to be quiet and I ain't ready yet. I know not. No. Feel how you feel. But don't try to diminish the Don't take away from Come on, baby. This baby, my, my foot padding over here. This sound like music to my ears. Got me patting my foot in the mighty name of Jesus. Pastor. Amen. Thank you. Pastor said amen. Amen. Oh, feel how you feel. She worked my nerves, but baby, she said, "What's wrong with that? I ain't mad at you. I'm sorry I worked your nerve, but I'm glad you got that testimony that I'm saying." I walked in Family Dollar the other day. I was going in, a young lady was coming out. She grabbed my hand. She said, "Put this on whatever you finna buy." I said, "Why don't you do it?" <laughs> Glory to God. Hello. That's what you want to be. You want to be a light in the world, right? She grabbed that hand and said, put this on what you 
you finna buy? And will. Come on. You want them infections to be flying all over the place. Baby, she can get a fry through. I know she preach hard, but baby, she can reach heaven. like that, that, that hymn doing it. So it be high, low, up, down. Mm -hmm. But see, when you sear it first, yeah. it put that crease there. Yeah. So when you run it under there, it's a smooth yeah. transition, right? Yeah, Honey, you don't want your conscience seared like the crease in a garment. You don't want your conscience to be where nothing can get in and nothing can get out. And that's where the enemy is trying to get us to. He's trying to sear our conscience with a hot iron. We don't want to be a morale hazard. Morale and moral could both be good or they could both be bad. You choose. Back into 